Welcome to iLecture Online. Here we're continuing with exploring what duality in second order circuits actually is. So we, saw, we, sh we gave you in the, in the previous video kind of a graphical representation of how you go from one circuit to another, but why can we do that? What's the reason? Well, take a look at these two equations. They're essentially equivalent, and let me show you why. So this is the equation that you get when you set up a voltage differential equation, and this is the equation that you get when you set up a current differential equation. Now notice the format is roughly the same, but both equations will have the same solution if, notice, we take 1 over RC, that's in front of the first derivative portion of the equation, and we equate it to R over L in the first derivative portion of that equation. In other words, we set 1 over RC equivalent to R over L. That means that R becomes the inverse of itself and the capacitance is replaced by an inductor. Essentially what that means is that whatever the resistance is, you replace it with the inverse of the resistance and whatever you have, if you have a capacitor, you change it to an inductor. If you have an inductor, you change it to a capacitor. That's what that means. Essentially, because there's other things inside circuits, this is what happens when we take the duality, when we get one circuit and we want to convert it into the duality circuit. This is what you must do. Again, as we mentioned before, the resistor, or before I continue, just simply notice that if you make that equivalence, if this becomes equivalent to that, and this becomes equivalent to that, and this becomes equivalent to that, as a result of this, of course, then the solution you get here from this equation will look identical to the solution that you get from that equation. That's what we mean by duality. In order to accomplish that, when you convert from one circuit to another, you must do the following things. Whatever resistance you have in the one circuit, it becomes the inverse of that resistance in ohms of the other circuit. An inductor will change to a capacitor, and a capacitor will change to an inductor. The voltage inside the circuit will become the current, and the current will become the voltage. A node will become a mesh, and a mesh will become a node. A series connection will become a parallel connection, and a parallel connection will become a series connection. The voltage source will become the current source, or the current source will become the voltage source. An open in the circuit will become a what we call a closed or a short circuit, and a short circuit in the circuit will become an open circuit. And if we have a switch that opens at time equals zero, that becomes a switch that closes at time equals zero. Or if you have a switch that closes at time equals zero, that becomes a switch that opens at time equals zero. If you make all those changes, you will have the exact duality circuit from the initial circuit you started with. Of course, you're itching to see some examples again, but that's essentially what you need to do. If you hold to those rules, you'll end up with the exact duality of the circuit, and that is how it's done. So if you change one, do you have to change all of them, or can you just change one of them, leave everything else alone? No, you have to change the entire circuit. That's right, because everything. This one's going to be problems. Nope, just nope. Fix here. Change the whole thing. Every single thing needs to be changed, all, okay. all the way throughout the circuit. It Yes, that's right. So yeah, you, you have to change it. Whatever it is in the one circuit becomes the opposite, so to speak, or the duality in the other circuit. Yep, that's it. That's how you do it.